All right, welcome back to Discrete Math Structures. Uh, this is Lesson 6, and we're going to talk about the math of computers. This is uh, typically not covered too thoroughly in discrete math classes, but some cover it, so I'm just going to talk about it briefly. So how do computers do math? They use binary numbers, and they perform logical operations, uh, typically the ones that we've seen before with and, or, and not. So first, we're going to talk about um, decimal numbers versus binary numbers. So uh, first, we have to discuss how uh, numbers are represented in decimal, right? So take, for instance, the number 123. We say uh, that this is simply uh, 1 times 100, right, times 2, uh, plus 2 times 10, plus 3 times 10 to the 0, which is 1, right? So the hundredth digit is multiplied by 100 which is 10 to the squared, 10's digit uh, by 10, which is 10 to the 1, and so on. So the same idea um, is carried out with binary, right? So take, for instance, 10. This is represented as 1010 zero, zero in binary. And we typically represent the base that we're in as a subscript, as you can see here and here. So 1010. Zero, one zero, um, the first place is going to be 2 to the 0. The second place is going to be 2 to the 1. This is going to be 2 to the 2. And this is first digit is going to be 2 to the 3, right? So uh, we say that 1010 zero, one zero is going to be 1 times 2 to the 3, plus 0 times 2 to the 2, plus 1 times 2 to the 1, plus 0 times 2 to the 0. So really, we only have 8 over here. Oh my gosh, that is a terrible 8. Uh, plus 2, as represented by 1 times 2 to the 1. And that gets us 10. Right? As we can see here, 10 and base 10. So how do we convert from decimal to binary? So let's try uh, 10 to the 14. Well, to find this, um, we first find the highest power of 2, so we know how many digits we're having. So we're going to round down uh, log base 2 of 14, which is going to be about 3.8073, which is going to be 3, which means we're going to have four digits in our number, right? Because the lowest one is 2 to the 0. So the first thing we want to do is divide um, 14, which is our original number, which is our original number, by um, 2 to the 3, which is going to be 8, right? So 14 divided by 8 is going to be 1.75, and then we round down to get the binary digit. So this is going to be uh, 1. Next, we're going to subtract uh, 14 by this number here, and we're going to divide this number by uh, 2 squared, which is the next exponent down. And we're going to round this down to get the binary digit, and then we simply repeat this process until the exponent is 0. So 14 minus 8 is 6. Uh, 6 divided by 2 squared is going to be 1.5, which, uh, if we round down, it's going to be 1. So that's going to be our next digit. So we have these two digits here. Um, next, we have um, we subtract it out, then we get 2. right? 2 divided by 2 to the 1 is going to be uh, 1, so that gives us our next digit, and then 2 minus 2 is 0. Clearly everything after here is going to be 0, right, because um, this number right here is 0. So thus 14 is going to look like 110, or 1110 in binary. So how do we perform addition with binary? Well, it's actually performed the same way that we perform addition in decimal. We simply um, add each digit. Um, we just do addition digit by digit. So 0 plus 0 is going to be 0. Uh, 1 plus 1 is going to be 0 carry the 1, right? And then this is simply going to be 1 plus 0 plus 1, and that's going to give us uh, 0 carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is going to be 0 carry the 1. 1 plus 0 is going to be 1. Right? So a few basic rules. Um, 0 plus 0 is going to be 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. And then 1 plus 1 is going to be uh, 1, 0. 
or keep in mind that that's 2. This is the way we represent 2 in binary, 1, 0. So the 1 is carried to the, over to the next digit. So how can a computer add? So note that at each digit, we perform an exclusive OR to find the resulting digit. So to check if there's a carry, we performed an AND. So consider adding two one-digit binary numbers uh, with logic. Let's let A be 1 and B be 2. Uh, A exclusive OR B is going to be 1 XOR 0, and that's going to be 1. And then, so that'll be the result of our addition. Next, we're going to check if there's a carry. So then that's going to be uh, 1 and 0. So, um, that's clearly 0. So uh, a plus b is going to be 1 plus 0, which is going to be 0, 1, which is 1. So let's consider the case of 1 plus 1. Well, uh, 1 xor 1 is 0, clearly. And then 1 uh, and 1 is going to be 1. Thus, 1 plus 1 is uh, 0, carry the 1, or 1, 0. Now what about subtraction? How can we represent negative numbers? Right? So keep in mind that when we um, subtract numbers, we're really, uh, as we can see here, a minus b, we're really just adding um, the negative version of a number to the original number. Right? So one way we can do this is we can negate every digit. Right? So take, for example, 10 in binary, 1, 0, 1, 0. Uh, we can negate every digit to get our 1's complement, right? And that'll give us um, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then when we add these two together, right, 0, 1, 0, 1, every digit uh, is exclusively ORed uh, to give us 1's throughout the entire thing. Now this is all right, but uh, that doesn't really look like 0 to us, right? So um, a better way of doing this is going to be what's called the 2's complement. And this is where we negate every digit, so we perform the ones complement, but then we add one. So we do the same math, then we get one zero 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 zero, right? Now keep in mind this one is carried over. So let's say this was a four-bit register. Uh, this one is just going to disappear because it's not carried over to anywhere. So this is just going to look like zero. That's why we consider two's complement to be better. Now, although this is uh, may um, be a better version of the ones complement. This doesn't take into account what's called overflow, which is what happens when uh, this this carry over here um, becomes one, which is bad. Because what if we were adding um, what if we were adding two numbers that were both positive, and um, the result went over? Well, we don't want that. But let's not quibble about this too much. So uh, how do we do this in the hardware? Well, we have a few ways to design uh, logical circuits. We let AND be represented by this um, gate right here. Um, it's going to be kind of like a capital D with two inputs, uh, A and B, let's call them. And the result is going to be A and B. Uh, we can do the same with OR, so A or B is simply going to spit back out A or B. And then uh, for not, it's going to take in A, and then it's going to output the complement of A, so not A. And exclusive OR is going to be just as you'd think. A X or B is going to result in A exclusive OR with B. Ugh, that is nasty. That symbol right here should really be a circle with a plus sign inside. Yeah, like that. And keep in mind the difference between OR and XOR is going to be this little line right here in front of the OR gate. And note that sometimes you'll find what's called NAND gates or NOR gates. So this is just the negation of AND or the negation of OR. So it's going to look just like a normal AND gate, right? It's going to have its two inputs, but it's going to have, and it's going to have an output, but it's also going to have a circle at the end. That just means that it's complementing it at the end, after the AND is performed. So if we have A and B, uh, the NAND operation is going to be uh, the negation 
of A and B. And we can use the Morgan's Law to find out that that's not A or not B. And a similar concept with OR uh, can result in NOR. So um, just try to look at this for a little bit. This is going to be a way that we can add 4-bit numbers using logical circuits, right? So, and you don't have to worry about doing this at all uh, if we're just looking at this from like a theoretical perspective. Just appreciate kind of what's going on here uh, on how um, we get our computers to do addition and then think about some of the more complicated things that we have computers do uh, besides addition, like think about multiplication or division or anything else. Think about how it's playing this video right now. Every, everything kind of boils down to logic uh, performed in this way. And keep in mind that this is only four bits. Um, most computers run off of like a 64-bit like operating system, so this is going to be uh, done 64. Um, this is going to have like 64 outputs right here, and this would typically be done in like the ALU of processor. But anyway, just appreciate how this is created. We just have a bunch of signals and a bunch of logic, and this is basically all it boils down to is a bunch of logic. Anyway, this is kind of a digression, but I um, hope you guys have enjoyed. Thanks for watching.